Massachusetts is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, gentlemen, for yielding. I was sitting back in my office trying to get some desk work done and watching this debate, and I had no intention of speaking, but just heard these arguments so many times, and they're tiring, to be perfectly honest. So I did a little bit of work, and I came up with a couple of quotes that I wanted to read. This is relating to the Fair Labor Standards Act of 1938, which I've heard referenced from the other side, that talked about a 44-hour work week and minimum wage at the time. Here are a couple of quotes. The act will destroy small industry. These ideas are the product of those whose thinking is rooted in an alien philosophy and who are bent upon the destruction of our whole constitutional system and the setting up of a red labor communist despotism upon the ruins of our Christian civilization. That's a quote from Representative Cox from Georgia. The Fair Labor Standards Act constitutes a step in the direction of communism, Bolshevism, fascism, and Nazism. That's a quote from the National Association of Manufacturers. The Fair Labor Standards Act would create chaos in business never yet known to us. No decent American can take exception to this attitude. What I do take exception to is any approach to a solution to this problem that is utterly impractical in an operation would be much more destructive than constructive to the very purposes which it was designed to serve. That was Representative Lembeck of Ohio. These arguments are not new. When, oh when, are you going to get tired of being behind history? When are you going to get tired of holding the American people back? Please find an opportunity at any case, health care, housing, education, minimum wage, anything to move us forward. Eighty years plus of the same arguments against the typical legislation that simply tries to move America forward and take care of our people. It's the same old argument, the same old rhetoric. It's wrong then, it's wrong now. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Gentleman's time has expired. Gentleman from Washington reserves and the gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized.